we're going to graph this function here and we're going to do the transformations in the order they're listed right here you always make sure you stretch before you shift i like to do horizontals first because they're a little more difficult and then the vertical is usually more straightforward because the horizontals are always backwards of what they look like so let's go ahead and start uh, let me use the blue so we want the horizontal stretch first that's always gonna be a multiplication and here it's the function itself is an x squared function right there. It's that whole thing squared. So this is the horizontal stretch. Now it looks like it's a make it twice as wide, both pi by two, but it's always the opposite. So it's gonna actually get half as wide. Shift, now the shift is this minus one, so subtract one. It always goes the opposite of what it seems like in horizontal, which actually goes to the right one. Uh, let's write down the base function now. I'll use a b of x equals just x squared. Uh, now we're going to go, here's the x squared function. Outside of it, there's now a negative 1. So that's a vertical stretch by negative 1. And vertical shift is the last part, subtract 1. So that means shift down 1. OK, so ready to graph the base function, and then each transformation one by one. So we'll start the base function here. You can make a table of values. Uh, for this, this can be a parabola. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And connect these together. And this is a parabola. So it gets steeper and steeper the further up you go. Uh, it should never actually be vertical. Uh, but you also don't want to draw these as straight lines. You want to make sure that they have some slight upward bend to them. All right, so ready to do the horizontal stretch. So stretch by one half. The function we're gonna graph, it's gonna be one half, oops, I already messed that up, two times x whole thing squared. All right, so our x values, negative one and one, are gonna get shrunk in half. Let's get a little crazy, actually, and let's graph. Normally, I don't graph the uh, points further up than this, but I don't like fractions so much so that I am going to graph two more points, which are running into all my writing up there. That's not great. OK, so we have two, four. Oh, this is horrible. Get rid of all this base function nonsense. All right. There we go. And while we're here, I'm going to take out these two points. I'm not really going to use those. All right. So we got 2, 4, negative 2, 4. Uh, the reason I want to use these is because we're about to shrink our x values by half. So when you shrink two and negative two, they become one and negative one. So we can avoid fractions. Always a fun thing to do. Uh, unless you really like fractions, then go for it. So there's our negative one, positive one. That zero, zero point's still there as you multiply the zero uh, x value by anything and you still get zero. So that origin's never gonna uh, stretch anywhere. But now we're gonna, we shrunk our x coordinates by half, and our y coordinate stays the same up here at four. Now this is getting to be a very steep parabola. It's hard to draw the proper bend in it, so just do your best. Oh, that's positive one, four, and negative one, four. Okay, uh, you could draw the other points in there. The y coordinates would be a half, uh, one, and the x coordinates would be plus minus a half, but I didn't want to mess around with halves. Uh, so I just used the other two points. All right, so we're gonna horizontal shift right one. So this is gonna be two times x minus one, whole thing squared. And we're gonna go right one. So our x values are all gonna increase by one. So we're gonna have zero, one, and two. 
the old y intercept moves over to right here, which is 1, 0. Now the other two points, which were up at 4, they're still going to be up at 4. But the x coordinates are going to be 0 and 2 instead of negative 1 and 1. They both move right one unit. All right, and we still have that same shape, parabola. If you're really bad at drawing, you can just, just draw a V. It's not great, but uh, you can already tell that the curvature right here is not great. Uh, and I think the curvature here is incorrect as well. Uh, that's okay. All right, vertical stretch of negative one. So this is y equals negative 1 times 2 x minus 1 squared. All right, so our y values are going to uh, become or be multiplied by negative 1. So the positive ones are going to become negative. I'm trying to squeeze all these in without using too much vertical space. But now we're going to need a lot of negative y values. So we still have the same 0, 1, and 2 x values. Uh, 4 becomes negative 4 for a y value. Okay, and I'm just going to recreate these points, but the y values are now negative, and of course, negative 0, 0. So this parabola is now opening downwards. There we go. All right, last step, we're going to do a shift down 1. And we don't need to write y equals, we're actually back to the original function. So it's f of x equals, same thing as before, except there's an extra minus one at the very end. And this is a shift down one. So the y coordinates were zero, negative four. So our new y coordinates will be negative one, negative five. Two, three, four. There's negative five. All right. So we got one and two. There's our two points at the bottom. And now that vertex or that middle point is going to move down one right there. And then connect these together. Oh, that's a really bad. All right. There we go. It should be more round near the vertex and then straighter near the arrows. All right, I'm happy with that graph. Uh, now, when you plot these on my open math, you use two points. One, the first one is always the vertex, and the second one can be any other point on this graph, which you can choose as either the vertex and the point on the bottom right, or vertex and point on the bottom left. Whichever two you want to use, go for it.